Hey guys, it's Mara. Um, in today's video, I want to talk to you guys about rogi and try to answer a few questions you may have, um, reasons why people get rogi and things like that. So first of all, rogi um, is an immune globulin and it's synthesized from human. Um, it's also called rogi. There's a lot of different names for it. Basically, the short rundown is it is an intramuscular injection. They usually um, give you the shot in the butt and it is to stop your body from producing antibodies to your baby. So it's given to pregnant women or right after you had your baby. So first of all, the people who get um, Rogam during their pregnancy are already RH negative women. Now, there are two different doses of Rogam. Um, some hospitals just carry the main regular dose, and then other ones there is a micro Rogam, which is um, 50 micrograms instead of 300. So it's a lot smaller of a dose, and that's usually given if the woman is less than 12 weeks pregnant because they say at about 12 weeks kind of that's when the baby's going to have enough blood um, or enough of its own makeup um, to produce a response, but um, if there is some kind of bleed in between baby and mom, that that'll kind of cover it, the microdose if they're less than 12 weeks. Now, if they're over 12 weeks, then they will give them the normal um, rhodium dose. So, um, now, if a woman has bleeding throughout her pregnancy, um, each time there's enough of a bleed, so, you know, if she's having bleeding, um, comes into the ER, they will probably give her rogam. Now, this is only for RH negative women. So, if you're A negative, O negative, AB negative, B negative, the negative blood types. Um, if you are a positive blood type, you will not need rogam actually, ever. So, um, another thing... I'll read this. I got the little insert. This is actually from the package Rogium that we give out. Um, it says, let's see, um, it's for use in prevention of RH immunization. So that's your body making a response to your baby if the baby is positive, um, a positive blood type. So pregnancy and other obstacles obstacle conditions in RH negative women unless the father or baby or are conclusively RH negative, delivery of an RH positive baby, um, and antepartum fetal maternal hemorrhage, actual or threatened pregnancy loss at any stage of gestation and ectopic pregnancy, and also another usage is prevention of RH immunization in any RH negative person after incompatible transfusion of RH positive blood or blood products. So, technically, this is not always just for uh, pregnant women. I didn't really think about the other use. But say, for some reason, somebody messed up, and it would have to be probably at least two people messed up, because when we perform your type, we have someone else perform um, your type over again to kind of, as a double check. But say someone was O negative and they got O positive blood, then they could give them rogam, probably quite a bit of rogam. <laughs> Um, quite a few shots to uh, make you not basically have a transfusion reaction. Um, so, let's see what else. Um, I'll read a little bit more. So, this is dosage and administration. For intramuscular use only, do not amin administer intravenously. So, like I said, get a shot in your butt. Uh, postpartum. So, Normally, women will get this at about 26 to 28 weeks, and that's just kind of to cover any little bit of blood there has been um, in, in between baby and mom. Now, like I said, if they have any bleeding throughout the pregnancy, each time they have a substantial bleed, then they will get rogam if they're RH negative. Um, so, this says, at or beyond 13 weeks gestation, administer within 72 hours. When suspected or proven exposure to RH positive um, red cells occurs resulting from invasive procedures, abdominal trauma, obst obst obstacle manipulation, ectopic pregnancy, pregnancy termination, or threatened termination. 
and then it says administer every 12 weeks starting from the first injection to maintain a level of a passively acquired D. Now this is another thing, if you get your blood typed um, and you've recently gotten rhodium, you will, you should, um, show up positive for that antibody. Now this is a passive antibody, so it's not you haven't actually produced anti-D, it's just the anti-D that you've gotten from the injection that will be circulating in your blood. And you want it to do that. But it can look like, if you get your blood type, it can look like you have that antibody, but it's not. You just, it's from what, the shot you got. Um, so, let's see what else. If delivery occurs within three weeks after the last antepartum dose, the postpartum dose may be withheld. So basically, if you somehow got your dose at like 28 weeks, say you had your baby at 30 weeks, which would, you know, be early, um, then they're saying you don't technically need another dose, but um, what they do after you have your baby, um, they do the blood type on the baby. If the baby's positive, you will get another rhodium. That's just to cover any kind of bleed um, during the actual birthing process. Um, but if um, we do a fetal screen, which basically tests how much of the baby's blood got in circulation of mom's blood. So it's kind of the opposite. Instead of mom's blood going into baby's blood, it's baby's blood into mom's blood. And how they do that is they stain the red cells, and fetal cells are a lot um, hardier, and they look different when stained. So Basically, they do an estimate of about how many of baby cells are in um, a field of red cells from moms, and if if there is more than I think three, I forget the exact test. We don't do the testing here. Um, if there's more than a certain amount, then they will actually need uh, more than one rhodium. So normally, one rhodium will cover any. Um, regular pregnancy, I don't want to say regular pregnancy, but if, as long as there wasn't a whole lot of blood loss, blood transfer, um, then that'll really cover it. But it says, um, basically they do the test, uh, the fetal screen for fetal maternal hemorrhage should be, and it should be performed if exposure is, oh, it's determined if an exposure of greater than 15 milliliters of red blood cells has occurred. So if there was some kind of bleed more than 15 milliliters, then, you know, one rhodium will kind of cover 15 milliliters. So if you were to accidentally get transfused with a positive um, unit of blood and you are negative, then you would need um, as many rhodiums to cover well, they're about 250 maybe milliliters, so 250 divided by 15, and that's how many rhodiums you would need. But little babies obviously don't have as much, you know, their blood, there's not going to be that much of a leak, hopefully, in reach, um, between baby and mom. So on um, the micro rhodium dose, which I said is uh, 50 micrograms or 250 international units, where the normal dose is 1,500 international units, um, it says administer within 72 hours of actual or threatened termination of pregnancy, spontaneous or induced, up to including um, 12 weeks gestation. So um, one of my, uh, uh, one of the doctors, an OB doctor that I used to see, um, well for, she does women's health stuff too, um, talked recently about like these kind of, uh, you know, abortions, but like backdoor abortions and stuff like that and uh or, or online or however they got the got it done but there's a lot of things that women maybe don't know um if you are a rh negative and say you did get an abortion that um wasn't you know either spontaneous or not spontaneous technically um and you don't get that rogam then if there was you know quite a bit of blood transfer hemorrhaging whichever um you can produce those anti-d um, antibodies, which if you decided to have a baby down the line, then you would already have those, um, and that could attack the baby, especially, you know, if the baby ends up being positive. So, um, that could be, that could be bad. And a lot of times, um, women that don't get prenatal care, 
or um, have a lot of children, they can produce antibodies not only to D or rhodium, um, rho D, but they can produce antibodies to other antigens. And what we learn through blood bank is always um, it's always the dad's fault. So it's always the male's fault because if the woman had the same, if the baby had the same um, genetic makeup, blood chemistry, whatever, as the mom then everything would be fine. But it's because of the dad, his genetics coming into play that the mom can then produce antibodies to and then affect subsequent children. So I hope you guys um, found this information informational and um, check out some of my other videos. I have some blood bank videos, urine videos, uh, drug screens, pregnancy tests, glucose tests, anything you'd ever want. Um, and yeah, comment down below and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Okay, <laughs> that was Laura Lee. Um, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.